Hi everyone, my name is Sarovi from the University of Washington. Last week, our group has just released Rosette 4. So today, I am going to show you what is new in this latest version. Before I talk about Rosette 4, however, let me give you a brief tour for what Rosette is in general in case you have not seen it. And I will do so using Rosette 3, the previous version, so that I can later compare and contrast the two versions. Alright, let's get started. What is Rosette? Well, Rosette is a hash language in Racket. One way to think about it is that Rosette is a language that adds symbolic values on top of regular Racket. Symbolic values are just like unknowns in math that we are all familiar with. What can we do with the unknowns in math? One possibility is that we can try to solve for the unknowns given constraints. For example, given that x plus 3 is equal to 5, we can solve for x and get that a solution is x is equal to 2. Another possibility is to use it in verification. Given that 3x plus 4x is equal to 7x, it is verified that this equation is true because no matter the value of x is, it is always going to be the case that 3x plus 4x is equal to 7x. Rosette allows you to ask this kind of queries, but you are not only limited to math operations. You can have the unknowns or actually the symbolic values to be of type boolean, um, fixed with integer, or even math functions. And you have the access to the full power of programming that Racket provides, including higher order function, mutation, data structure, conditional expression, and even macro. Computation with the symbolic values are really useful in many applications, including uh, the program verification and program synthesis. But to give you a concrete ex uh, application for what Rosette can do, I will attempt to solve a puzzle using Rosette, and that puzzle is Sudoku. In the Sudoku puzzle, we want to fill in the blanks with a number from 1 to 9 so that every row, every column, and every region, which is a block of size 3 times 3, all numbers are distinct. Here's an example of a Sudoku puzzle, and here's an example of a solution to the above puzzle. So, how can we approach solving Sudoku using Rosette? It's exactly like this, right? Here we have a constraint, and we try to solve for the unknown. The unknowns here are the blanks that we try to figure out what they are. And the constraints are that the solution must be valid. This encodes the rules of the game and constrain what the blanks can be. So our plan is that we write a function that validates that a solution is valid. And this is just a regular racket function. In fact, to show you that this is indeed a regular racket function, we will temporarily switch to hashtag racket. And let's do it. Let's write that function. The first thing that we will do, well, according to how to design program, is to um, come up with some example of the data that we try to manipulate or use in the function. So here's an example of the data that we are trying to validate. It's taken from Wikipedia. So hopefully, if we write uh, the function valid, calling valid on this solution should give true as a result. And in fact, I have already written the valid function, so I will just walk you right through it. Again, valid return true even only if the input solution is valid. It does exactly what you expect it would do. For example, it checks that all numbers are between 1 and 9. It checks that all rows are distinct, all columns are distinct, and every region is distinct, and so on. Here's, here are helper functions that the uh, valid function calls. And you can see all sort of features that uh, is in Racket, including higher order function, data structure like list, and so on. So we can now attempt to test that uh, the valid function is correct. So if we call valid on solution one, 
Indeed, it returns true as expected. And as a sanity check, let's try to create solution two by modifying um, something. I will modify two to be three to make it purposeful, uh, purposefully wrong. And then let's test it while it on solution two. This is now returning false, indicating that th this solution is invalid as expected. All right, that's great. In fact, we can even further do something a little bit more. What I will do is that I will write a function assert, and this assert will correspond to the assert statement in various uh, programming languages. It, what it does is that if you provide false, it will cause an assertion error. So if we call valid on solution one, and we call assert on it, nothing happened because it is valid. But if we call valid on solution two, oops, actually I should create solution two here and change two to three, and then assert that it is valid, it will cause an error. So we can reformulate our attempt to solve for the puzzle to let's try to find a solution so that the assertion that the solution is valid does not cause an error. It's now time to solve the puzzle for real. Let's do it. What we will first do is that we will change the language back from racket to Rosette. And now we will define a puzzle. And this is simply taken from Wikipedia, where I encode zero to mean the blank. Next, I will define a symbolic board. And that simply replaces all zero cells with a symbolic value. By the way, here's a way that you would define the symbolic value in Rosette via the defined symbolic form. Why do we do that? Well, according to our plan, we want to solve for the blanks. And that is exactly un the unknowns that we need to provide. And that is why we need to create a symbolic value here. Then we attempt to assert that the symbolic board must be valid and then try to solve for it. Another thing that I would like to note is that assert is now a primitive construct that Rosette provides. It is no longer user defined. Let's try to see what so is. Well, so is a model. It indicates that there is a solution. We can evaluate the symbolic board inside this solution and we get this solution as a result. We can even further ask if this solution is equal to solution one. And it returns true, indicating that we managed to find the solution that Wikipedia provides. So that's great. We now succeed at attempting to solve the puzzle using Rosette. But this may not be the only thing that we want to do with Rosette. For example, we might wonder if this solution here is the only pass is the only solution that this puzzle admits. Perhaps there might be another solution that this puzzle admits as well. So what we want to do here is that we want to ask whenever the bot is valid, is it the case is it the case that the bot must be equal to solution one? This can be done in Rosette by using the verify verify query. We ask that assuming that the symbolic bot is valid and then want to verify that the symbolic bot must then be equal to solution one again whenever the symbolic bot is valid two things that i would like to note the first thing is that the assume and the guarantee are keyword of the verify and it, they must be at the top level another thing that i would like to, would like to note is that here we use the assert to create a constraint, but it is actually not assert. We simply uh, repurpose the meaning of the assert statement to mean assume inside the assume keyword. All right, with those notes, let's now try to run the function. We get unsat as a result, indicating that it is verified. Whenever the symbolic board is valid, 
the symbolic word is equal to solution 1. As a sanity check, let's try to modify 6 here to 0 to increase the degree of freedom in the puzzle. And we run this again. We now get a model as a result, indicating that, well, this is a counterexample. It is a solution where it is not equal to solution 1, but it is valid. And here's a gist of what Rosette is. Let's now see what is new in Rosette 4. To explain the new features of Rosette 4, let me attempt to part the previous program that I wrote in Rosette 3 here. The first thing that we notice is that we now have a compilation error, and that is because in the verify form, it no longer accepts the assume and the guarantee keywords, due to the fact that we now have a proper assume statement in the language, making these keywords unnecessary. The fix, therefore, is to remove them and then change the first assert to assume. Now we should get unsat. Hmm, somehow we get the model. That is weird. Ah, it is because I forgot to change this zero back to six. Let's do that. Now we get unsat as expected. Adding the assume statement to the language is the most significant change from Roset 3 to Roset 4. It allows users to issue the assumption and the assertion interleaved however they like. They are not only limited to all the assumptions and all the assertions in order as they were in Roset 3. Moreover, they can issue the assumptions and assertions anywhere in the program execution, not only limited to the top levels. The semantics of the assume statement is, well, to assume that its argument is true when it is evaluated. To demonstrate the subtlety, let me attempt to verify something really easily. First, I will define B to be a symbolic boolean. Then, I will assume that B must be true and then assert that B is true. When we verify it, we get that it is verified. However, if we change the order, now we get a counter example indicating that the verification fails. And that is because when we assert that B must be true, there is no assumption that B is true yet. Therefore, it, it causes the failure. One thing that I would like to note is that if we were to part a Rosette 4 program back to Rosette 3, it could be quite challenging because the assume statement is pretty hard to get rid while preserving the uh, constraints that are being generated. It can be shown that this assume statement is expressive in a sense that to get rid of it, you might potentially need to transform the program globally. Lastly, I would like to discuss about the performance of Rosette 4. When we initially want to add the assume statement to the language, all we hope is that it will not make the performance to be worse compared to Rosette 3. However, as it turns out, the performance of Rosette 4 is in fact better compared to Rosette 3. There is no deep reason behind it, except the fact that the symbolic evaluation changes significantly, and that generates a new kind of shape for the uh, logical constraints, which somehow is more friendlier to the uh, logical constraint solver, and that causes the program to be faster. These are all the major changes from Rosette 3 to Rosette 4. If you have a simple program that you would like to port to the new version, it may suffice to only change the top level forms like verify to fit the new syntax. However, if you have a more complex program involving symbolic reflection, you may need to change more. Rosette 4 also adds other minor features. For example, we now have a function that allows you to operate a list based on fixed-width integer. 
we also have a new synthesis library that allows you to synthesize recursive grammar in a way that is more concise than Rosette tree. Lastly, there are also features that were actually added in Rosette tree, but after the major release, so I will mention them quickly. First is a symbolic arrow tracer. Second is the value browser. And lastly is the value destructuring library. I would like to conclude this talk here. Again, this is live now. You can download Rosette 4 now and read the documentation if you would like to know the detailed changes. Thank you, and I'd be happy to take any questions.